Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. A bit ago I made a train whistle. A round train whistle. <coughs> Based on that, one of the local wood turning clubs, the Cascade Wood Turning Club, has asked me to do a demo. After the last one, a viewer suggested that I make it tuneable. That is, that they can change the tune before it's locked in. Now the tone actually depends upon the depth of the holes that are drilled in the cylinder. So change the process. This one, the holes will go clear through and dowels inserted so that it can be tuned according to the length of the dowels. So let's make this round wooden train whistle. The first step is to make the end caps. One plane and one that will be the mouthpiece. I like to make the end caps from a contrasting wood. Here I'm using walnut. I'm doing the end caps first because it is easier to size a tenon to a mortise than it is to size a mortise to a tenon. I'll drill out the mortise with a one and three quarter inch Forstner bit. I'd prefer a slow speed while drilling this, but this small lathe stalls, so I'll crank it up a little. There's more heat and burning than I'd like to see, but there's little choice. I'll reduce the diameter just a little bit. I've drawn up the tailstock with a rubber stopper fitted over the live center to provide some additional security. Since this is the mouthpiece, I need just a little air distribution chamber inside the end cap. Then after just a little diameter reduction in shaping, I'll part it off. I've flipped the piece around and mounted it to a scroll chuck in an expansion hold. I had to play with this a little because it did not seem to be running true after the flip. I'll tool the outside now into a simple shape. Now I can drill a 3 8 inch hole for the air tube. I didn't drill it earlier when drilling the large hole because I would have drilled into the next piece of walnut that will be for the next end cap. Then final shaping of the mouthpiece with a gouge. Then I'll start sanding with 180 grit, mineral oil and beeswax. For this project, I'm stopping at 220 grit. When sanding, the oil wax makes a slurry to hold the sanding dust. I think it also tends to force fine particles down into the pores of the walnut, which is fine with me. For the main tube, the first task is to mark out the holes. I use a pattern I drew in Microsoft PowerPoint and punch each hole center and the center of the 2x2x6 blank. Drilling the hole clear through the blank is a lot of work. First I'm using a brad point bit to go as far as I can with the quill travel of the drill press. At this point I found that my bit extension did not fit this brad point bit. So off to the hardware store. Instead of a bit extension I purchased a 12 inch long 1 half inch diameter bit. Then the same process again with the longer bit. Start with the bit in the hole, lift the plank and prop it with wood scraps. I'm hoping that the pre-drilling with the brad point bit will guide the longer twist bit better than using the twist bit by itself. The bit gets very hot. This process is quite awkward. It would have been easier with another pair of hands. There's some deviation in the holes, but not bad. Time to turn the whistle's main body. I'll rough it down and smooth it out. The short tool rest on the small lathe is somewhat inhibiting. There was a small loose knot. I put some CA glue in it and sprayed it with accelerator. However, WD-40 does not work well as an accelerator, even though it's in a blue can, just like the real accelerator. Then I'll pack some small shavings and dust in the hole and hit it again with CA glue. Then I'm switching to a large skew for final smoothing. But to ensure it's very smooth, I'll sand the cylinder with a sanding block. I cannot get it that uniform with a skew, yet. 
I'm marking a line 5 8 inch down from the mouthpiece end of the cylinder and the final length of the whistle. Since there were tiny checks in the end of this blank, I had cut it a little long. With all the drilling hassle, I should have just cut it off before drilling. Now it's just a piece of wood to waste away. Now for the side holes. They probably have some official name. Perhaps someone can enlighten me. I'll alternate between a gouge and a skew to refine the cut. I've discovered that the slope does not have to be 45 degrees. This one is not, but at least it is a decent target. Then back to sanding, including the little chips that remain around the openings to the sound chamber. Now for the tenons for the end caps. A careful observer may note that I actually cut the tenons first, but that's harder to fit and not the way I'll do it in the club demo. Then I'll fit the tenon to the mortise. The whistle requires little reeds to make it any sound at all. I'm using a one half inch hardware store dowel that seems to fit pretty well. It's a little longer than what I need, so I have something to hold on to. I'm sanding just a little flat on the side of the dowel. Then I'll cut them to length on a scroll saw. But Murphy's Law struck again. My blade broke and I had to change it before completing them all. Cutting this size of piece on a bandsaw would have made me nervous. I'd have to create a holder to keep my hands out of harm's way. I've now inserted the reeds in the cylinder with the flat side facing out and the end of the reed right at the edge of the opening that is 5 8 inch from the end. It's time to test to see if I have the alignment right and tweak them if I have to. Since the air chamber is not yet sealed on the other end, I have to plug it with a finger to make sound. When I'm happy, I'll glue them in place with CA glue if I'm in a hurry. Just don't get any CA glue on your lips. A final test confirms they're okay. For this whistle, I've glued in different lengths of dowel in three of the four holes. The last will be full depth and sealed by the end cap. It's tunable for someone with a better ear than I have. Now I have my whistle. I've practiced and refined the process. I think I'm ready for the club demo. Meanwhile, I've come up with two more designs that I'll have to try sometime. Wish me luck with the demo. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my As Wood Turns channel and website so I can keep you updated. Have fun and be safe and always wear a full face shield. This is Alan Stratton from AsWoodTurns.com. We'll see you again shortly on the next video.